Hey everybody, Dave Lindbergh in Hong Kong with another episode of the THD podcast. Thanks for joining us today. We have uh, Salvador Consultant. It is a magnetic consultant company in the East Coast in the Connecticut area joining us today. So Salvador Magdaleno is joining us today. So we're excited. To, we're going to learn all about magnets and uh, roadmaps for technologies and history of different magnets that are used and cost and all the benefits to different magnets used in speaker motors. So without delay, Simon's in Japan. And just for everybody's reference, we're up early this morning, uh, 6 a.m. here in Hong Kong. It's 7 a.m. in uh, Japan. How are you doing today, Simon? Yep, very good, mate. Thanks. All right. <laughs> and Salvador Magdaleno in the Connecticut area. Uh, nice to meet you. How are you doing today? I am fine. Thank you. Nice to meet you guys. And here okay. is around uh, 6 p.m. It's okay. Fine. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah. It's it's uh yeah it's uh, it's it's easy to know what time it is in New York uh, this time of year in in China because it's exactly yes. twelve hours, but uh, right. just mm -hmm. just one piece of housekeeping before I get too far here, um I just want to remind everybody that our sponsor is the Alti the Audio Loudspeaker Technologies International, and uh, they are going ahead with their uh, annual events the the show in Orlando October twenty fourth twenty fifth so we encourage. Uh, anybody in the audio industry or anybody interested in the audio industry to get down there and get their networking on. Um, it's a great event and it's great to see people getting back together. Okay, so uh, let's get to know about uh, Sal and his, uh, his, his maybe a bit, uh, a bit of your background, how you ended up being a specialist in magnets. Well, <laughs> uh, well uh, I am an electrical engineer. I, okay. I am from Mexico. I come okay. here to USA uh, seven years ago uh, to work in the magnetic industry in general, but I just started to work in transformers uh, 17 uh, years ago. Okay. I start with power transformers. Um, I dedicate around 10 years in power transformers to try to reduce uh, losses in these devices. Uh, and now, well, um, Five years ago, when I arrived here to USA, I started to work with some companies with uh, permanent magnet technologies. Uh, for example, I was working in uh, Correlate Magnetic Research. It's a small company in Alabama, Huntsville, Alabama. And they yeah. produce a very, very interesting technology. It's a smart magnets. It's a, it's a new technology with magnets. You can produce different mechanical functions only using two magnets. It's impressive, it's very interesting technology. But in general, after this, I was working with a couple of the companies here in USA in the magnetizing process of permanent magnets for different uh, technologies or different applications. The idea was to try to, uh, to design these uh, magnetizing fixtures to magnetize magnets for different grades, different materials. And this is very special field because we have in all the world around only seven companies doing this kind of the things. And it's very interesting. I was involved in magnets um, for now around five years. Mm -hmm. uh, now I am working with Mike Crasco. Uh, some mm -hmm. people here know, know him. And I, work, I, I am working with him in different magnetic projects for uh, loudspeaker, for the loudspeaker industry. Mm -hmm. And... Well, in general, I, wor I was working in different technology here in USA for the space, for medical applications. Uh, uh, it's, 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 it's very big, the industry, magnetic industry here in USA. Is, okay. there, uh, is there some fundamental differences between uh, magnetics and transformers and permanent magnets from your point of view? Yeah, it's very different. It's different application. But for example, the big application for permanent magnets now is electric motors. Uh, I was working with a couple of the companies here. Well, uh, the one company, for example, in Kansas City. Uh, and this company is trying to, to, uh, uh, to create a new technology for permanent magnets in motors. It's new technology, but uh, you can compare the, uh, for example, the electrical machine or electric motors. Uh, with transformers, for example, uh, 
we call them electrical machine. One machine is a static, like the transformer is a static machine, and the electric motor is rotating or mm. uh, another kind of machine like linear motors. But uh, mm. in general, uh, the main application now for permanent magnets is electric motors. And after mm. this, I am thinking another big application is low speakers because we produce a lot of speakers, load speaker, micro speaker with magnets all the time. And it's very big, the industry now for magnets. Mm -hmm. I guess a question for Simon Wood or, or maybe Sal as well is, is a loudspeaker technically not an electric motor? <laughs> is, well, it, uh, it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so the fundamentals. Um, yeah, so so maybe just from a, a high level is is the, the the different types of permanent magnets, and maybe you had a presentation that you wanted to share to to kind of walk people yep. through visually. Okay. 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 In general, uh, in general, well, I have this presentation only to try to show what is the idea for permanent magnets now. Mm -hmm. uh, in general, the people knows what is the one, what, what means when you talk about magnets, you know. But in general, the people don't know what is the constitution of the magnets, especially the materials. Because people don't know what is the difference between different magnet, permanent magnet material that we have now in the, in the market. And some people is developing now new mag, uh, permanent magnet materials for uh, new applications, for example. I can give some examples. But mm -hmm. in general, for example, the, um, the permanent magnets is uh, in general, we can see the permanent magnet like a, a, stat, a static uh, magnetic field source in general. And in general, well, one permanent magnet has a south and north poles, okay? Don't exist the monopole for now. <laughs> the people cannot prove that we, we, don't, we have only one pole is for now is we have only two poles. So, and, so just, just, <clears throat> just for maybe the lay people watching and, and even myself, the permanent magnet means that you're taking a raw material and you're magnetizing it and adding that magnetic effect to a, a, a substrate or some kind of material. Is that correct? Yeah, it's correct. In general, is is uh, uh, idea. Uh, we have different mag uh, magnet materials. Mm -hmm. And the idea is to try to magnetize this material to try to get this, to magnetize them and try to get some uh, uh, static uh, magnetic field source from them for okay. different application, for load speaker, for motors, for different kind of things. And in general, uh, for example, another very interesting thing is what is the name of the region between the North uh, Pole and the South Pole? The name of this okay. region is the transition region. Some people don't know anything about this region, but it's very, very important. Uh, okay. This region, when you magnetize one material, you create uh, this region. This region is between both poles. It's the transition yeah. when the field change of the direction. And it's very interesting because uh, 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 in very when the magnetization process is very well or is very good, this transition region is very very small. When the transition region is very very big, uh, sometimes the sometimes the magnetization was not good. And you can see here in some picture uh, we have this magnetic view film, this mm -hmm. green paper here. We use uh, in the magnet industry the people use this uh, uh, film that has some uh, magnetic particles in the interior. Uh, they put on uh, this field on the magnets, on the surface of the magnets. And you can see, you cannot, pre you, you cannot measure anything with this uh, magnetic view film, but you, but you can see the, the, the region with magnetization. You can see these dark, dark regions is, maybe it's north and south regions, okay? Mm -hmm. The pole regions of the magnet. And these, uh, the light uh, um, uh, lines or mm -hmm. these lines is, is the transition region between uh, north and south poles. And it's very interesting. It's only yeah. general information about magnets. Okay. So, so, so the, well, uh, what defines north and south? How do you uh, determine that in absolute terms? 
the, the what? What defines north and south? How do you know which is north and which is south? Oh well, you define the uh, the people define the direction of the of the poles, but in general, uh, you can measure this the the uh, the direction of the magnetic field using, for example, a Gauss meter. You can use a Gauss meter to measure the the direction of the field, and depends on the the. For example, in one gas mirror, you can say the 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 name the, the number is negative is 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 south, or is or positive is is north. But in general, you can see you can see what depends on the on the device that you need to put the magnets. You yeah. will say they needs to be south, and you need to detect the direction of the south. So in, general, then, in, in absolute terms, based on the Earth's magnetic field, then is it? Earth's north is north, and whatever polarity that is, that's what north is. Yes. What happens yes. if the Earth's magnetic field flips? Do we have to change all our norths and souths? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It depends on the on the device. You, for example, in uh, in engineering, when you use magnets, you say this is north and south, and this moron needs to have this magnet in this direct with this polarity in this position like this. Then you need to measure what is the south and north, and put the magnet like this. You flip the magnet, well, the direction of the magnetic field is in opposite direction. They produce mm. uh, the one magnetic field, but in the opposite direction for the magnetic field, that, for example, you create with coils and morons and other kind of things. But this interesting question. Another, another very interesting data about magnets is the magnetization process. Mm. The people don't know, um, believe me, I found, uh, I have here around four books very old books, mm -hmm. and they talk about uh, magnetization process of the magnets, but they have only four pages for this. We don't have many information about this uh, technology. You cannot find this information in internet and other kind of things, but this process is very interesting and it's very expensive sometimes. And the process is, uh, is difficult too, and it is expensive, but depends on the material that you want to magnetize. Because okay. you, need to, you need to apply different levels of the energy for different material. And especially, for example, in the low speaker, you can magnetize in situ uh, the speaker. Yeah. You can create the coil. You can put the, uh, the, uh, the speaker, the cone of the speaker with the magnet there, virgin magnet with any mag uh, field, and you can magnetize the, uh, the speaker together with all the ensemble, with the coal, with the boss coil, with everything you can magnetize, everything, all the, ma the magnet of the speaker. But in general, the, the process is very interesting, but sometimes it is expensive and requires very high level of the energy. Okay. And well, in general, we have <clears throat> four materials now in general. The people can see only four materials, commercial permanent magnet materials now in the market. It is general uh, magnet, uh, many uh, applications they are using now. For example, it's anilco. It's a mix with, oh, it's a alloy between aluminum, nickel, mm -hmm. and cobalt. The another material is ceramic ferrite. In general, it's iron and oxygen. Uh, but you can mix this, uh, uh, the iron, uh, well, you can mix this with, for example, a strontium or barium. It's another material that you can mix this material to create ferrite uh, ceramic ferrite ma uh, magnet. Mm -hmm. Another uh, magnet material that we have now is neodymium. Neodymium, iron, and, bor and um, boron. We, we call this magnet now neo. The people yeah. say neo magnets, or, uh, but in general, it's neodymium magnet. And the, and the last uh, material that we have now is samarium cobalt magnets. And in general, we have different applications for these materials. Anilco is uh, some uh, application they are using now anilco, or they continue using anilco, like some um, old, uh, well, some old design of the speaker, they are using anilco sometimes. Mm -hmm. Only the problem with this material is the demagnetization. <laughs> Some grades of the Anilco, special very low grades of the Anilco, you can demagnetize this, this magnet only with the contact with the steel. 
okay. you put in content of the steel this material you demagnetize maybe 20 or 25 percent if you touch with uh, one uh, an ilco magnet with uh, you have contact between between an ilco and a steel one time you they magnetize 20 percent approximately you return and you you reproduce the same process the second time, it's another 20% of the demagnetization. It's very easy to demagnetize this, this material. It's very easy. It's, it's for the reason that uh, a few applications, they continue using this material. The another very big uh, advantage of this material is the temperature of, of, of operation. It's okay. very high, the, the temperature of the operation of this material. And for this, people they say we need to go for an ILCO because they, oper they can operate for very high uh, uh, temperatures. For example, for the space application, mm -hmm. the temperature is around 200 Celsius degrees. Well, an ILCO is a good option or they can go for Samarium cobalt. It's another application. But depends on the level of the magnetic field that you need to create. You need to choose the material. And, and also within all these, uh, these, these families, uh, I, I'm sure that there, there's also like percentage blends. So people probably play with the concentration of the amount of neo or iron or, or nickel in each of these and create recipes. Um, and yes. so some, some more pure, maybe neo mm -hmm. magnets might be stronger or better performance, but also cost. And there's a whole uh, litany of variables that uh, spawn out of that in performance and cost. Yeah. Uh, you need, yeah, you need to take into account all the different parameters in your design, magnetic design, to try to decide what is the best option uh, in the election or the, when you try to, uh, to choose what is the uh, permanent magnet material that you want to use. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, in the speaker now, in the speakers, low speaker, uh, we are using a lot of uh, neodymium magnets, a lot of neo magnets. And Ferrite magnets is another material that we are using a lot. Mm -hmm. And some special uh, speakers, low speaker, they are using samarium cobalt. But in okay. general, the two materials that we are using in, in low speaker is neo and ceramic ferrite, it's, uh, using different grades of, of the neodymium or ceramic ferrite. In general, these are the two materials that we are using in speakers for now. Yeah, because often, often uh, speaker designers will either refer to it as a ferrite magnet or sometimes mm -hmm. they'll refer to it as a ceramic magnet. Does that have to do with the, the balance of the material or is that just a historic whatever they learned to call it is why they call it one or the other? No, for example, ferrite. Ferrite yeah. has, has uh, some um, level of the energy. Okay, mm -hmm. magnetic energy. And NEO has a little more higher uh, level of the energy. Uh, in general, if you have more energy, for example, in, low, in one uh, low speaker, you, when you start to decide the low speaker and you want to create very small low speaker, okay? Uh, you need, for example, ferrite speakers. The, the ferrite speaker, they, they are a little more tall, more bigger. They are bigger. But uh, when you are using Neo for the same speaker, the size of the speaker is very, very small. And it's, an, it's another uh, consideration. If you use Neo, neodymium magnet, the speaker try to, to, to be more and more small compared with ferrite. It's because right. the level of the energy of the, of the material is, is three times more bigger for Neo then you don't need to, 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 to put more magnet material to create more. Power. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, okay. I get that part. But my question was just uh, sometimes in my world, people will designate, uh, we need a ceramic magnet in this one, or sometimes they'll call it a ferrite. Are those two terms interchangeable? It's the same. When they say okay. ferrite, it's fer ceramic. It's fair, it's right? the same thing. Okay. Yeah. I just mm -hmm. noticed there's certain groups of uh, audio engineers. They'll use one term and some people will use the other. So just the people watching. So do they know that it's the same thing? Don't worry about yeah, it. The, yeah. It's the same thing. Ceramic ferrite, but the people don't want to say ceramic ferrite. They say ferrite or ceramic material. And right. generally it's, it's ferrite. Okay. Yep. Uh, well, we have here a uh, 
for here, what is it? What what was the uh, development of the different magnet materials? And you can see Anilco. Uh, Anilco was developing or was using more between the 40s and the 60s. And mm -hmm. after this, uh, the use of the ferrite in the 80s was more bigger. The use the application for the ferrite. And Samario cobalt appears here in, in the 80s, around the 80s and 70s, and 70s. Uh, and after this, all the next uh, next application after uh, uh, the 80s was uh, neomagnets. In general, now all the people wants to use neomagnets. Is that is and that from it, is that from automotive demands or where does that come from? In, Everything. Maybe in, it's in general, okay. yeah, in linear more linear motors, in uh, low speakers, in uh, rotating uh, electrical machines, and different uh, kind of these magnetic devices, normal mag magnetic devices. Now they are they try to use neon magnets, but they need to think more about uh, the operation, temperature of the operation, and other kind of the things to try okay. to see is the best option, or for example, ferrite is another option. Uh, for example, maybe 20 years ago, the people was using ferrite for permanent magnet motors. Okay, the people was using a lot ferrite for permanent magnet motors because it was so easy to magnetize these magnets in the rotors of these machines. And after this, they say, well, we need to increase the power of the machines. And they start to put NEO. Uh, and they start to put NEO, but we found another problem. Okay, NEO is powerful, but it's very difficult to magnetize. Oh. Then it's another part of the process that we need to learn more about the magnetization process of the magnets, especially in electrical machine and another kind of the devices. Uh, it, it's a little more complicated the magnetization. Okay, is there another issue in, in the resource? Because I think I've heard that uh, NEO is called what the rare earth metal. So it's that one part of the periodic table that comes out ver like horizontally mm -hmm. at you, but like ferrite, I mean, you can kind of see it in, in soil or all over the place. So yes, I, I guess that's a concern as well is the, the amount of Neo that's available globally. Yeah, the, the China produces 80% of all the neodymium uh, uh, materials. They, they extract the neodymium from uh, China extract the neodymium, but uh, Yes, uh, we have this problem now here in USA. Uh, we are trying to, for example, some companies here in USA, they are trying to recycle, uh, to try to use the uh, um, magnets from uh, very, old, very old devices that you put in the garbage, try to yeah. recycle this, this material now. And, but in general, well, China has a control for now for this material. And for example, Africa, Africa, uh, they have another control the material for cobalt. They extract the cobalt in Africa. Then it's another material that some people start to use in an electrical machine now, samarium cobalt. Then the cobalt is another very, very good material. Uh, well, it's another problem, the extraction of, this mat the, of these minerals now. Okay. Yeah. And for example, in the next graph that I have here, you can see the different material that we have now. And I put, you can see in, the, in yellow, in the, the graph, the yellow, uh, um, yellow scale. And this is for a new material that we have now uh, in, uh, in developing by, for example, in iron magnetics. Mm -hmm. They produce, they start, they want to uh, start to produce this material you can see the level of the energy here. Uh, for example, for NEO, we have around 50. 50 is the energy for NEO. Mm -hmm. But for nylon, nylon the, uh, we can say is hypothetical now, theoretical <laughs> value of the energy can be around 100, uh, after uh, 140 can be. It's wow. super huge the energy of this material. And well, they are working very hard to try to to get uh, to try to develop this this material with more and more energy now. And the idea is to try to to compete with the 
with another materials now in the market, but this is another possible material that we will have in the next 10 years in different application, I believe. It's okay. very interesting. It's very interesting material, but now it's only theoretical. And now they have, they are trying to start to produce the first uh, uh, samples to try to test the material in different applications. Okay. And see, let's see what happens in the future. But looks looks good the future for this material. Uh, nitride iron is the material. Okay. Nitride iron. Yeah. And well, in general, we have the uh, we have these uh, uh, demagnetization curves. This is the name of these curves. Mm -hmm. And this curve has different levels of the uh, the magnetic field, flux density, and strain of the magnetic field. And we call this uh, age. We we call this value like uh, coercitivity uh, value for the magnet, and we have the residual value for the magnet. And we can see the different uh, uh, curves for the different materials here. And the, the region below all, all, all these curves is the, uh, the energy of the material, okay? Okay. Then for example, ceramic has, you can see the small area for ceramic or ferrite, ceramic ferrite. Okay. The area below the curve is very, very small compared with the neo. Okay. The neo area or the neo region to operate the material is very big. Then it's for the reason that people now, for example, in low speaker, they are trying to use neo magnets uh, to try to reduce the, the size of the, the low speakers. And you see some uh, earbuds or um, headphones. Yeah. They are, they, in general, they are using neo magnets because they can produce very, very high magnetic field with a small volumes of the material. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen that N52 used in some high performance uh, in-ear drivers. Yeah, I've we have that. different, we, we have different grades on you. We have yeah. N40, N42, N48, N50, N52, and all these levels of the, all these grades of the neodymium, they have different values of the H and B. And, well, you have more energy with the number is to, uh, 48 compared with 50. Well, 50 has more energy. And we have another grades now of the neodymium, SH, UH, and all these grades of the neodymium, they have more and more energy. And, but you need to apply more and more magnetic field to, to magnetize this magnet. But what they can the, also... Uh... What does the number N52, what does the 52 mean? Is there some standard that it no, derives from? No, it's very interesting because the name, for example, you can see Neo N42, okay? N42, we can go for this uh, slide here and N42, uh, 42, the number is the energy. Oh, I see. Yeah. It's this BH figure. Yes. Then when you talk about N50, N52, N52, 52 is the energy, the level of the energy. And the, the idea was to put these numbers to try to say, oh, we have M42, okay, but we have M, uh, M52, but we have more energy for M52. Let's go for M52. Why well, I, I don't need a lot of energy. Let's go for M40. Depends on the application and other kind of things, but the, the people try to identify the, the material using these numbers for mm -hmm. NEO. Okay. So yep. it's, it's not Newtons or anything like that. It's just N, oh. for, N for Neo. <laughs> yeah, it's the energy of the material. Okay. Yeah. And well, uh, let me to show you. Here is the advantage and disadvantage of the different materials now. Uh, for example, we can st uh, start with the magnet strain or the magnet intensity. Okay. We have more and more energy in Neo. Okay. If the energy is very, very high. The magnetic field that, the, that, that this material can produce is very high too. Then mm -hmm. we, we have more and more energy in Neo. Well, they produce more magnetic field. And after this is samario cobalt. After this ceramic ferrite. In the mm -hmm. last is anilco, okay? Because they have more, uh, anilco has very, very low levels of the energy compared with Neo. Another thing is, the, for example, the, uh, 
the magnet cost is another very interesting uh, thing. The magnet cost mm -hmm. is very expensive now. It's very expensive. The samarium cobalt, okay, it's for the same reason. The cobalt is a uh, this uh, uh, is very difficult to find cobalt now in the uh, in in different parts of the world, especially in Africa. They mm -hmm. extract the cobalt from Africa, but this is another material that is expensive. After this is neo, neodymium, and after this is anilco. And the last point is ceramic ferrite. It's very interesting to see that ceramic is, is uh, less expensive compared with anilco. Mm -hmm. And the operation, temperature of the operation, you can see anilco is the best material. <laughs> It's the best material for, for high temperature, to operate in high temperature, but the magnetic field that can produce is very, very small. And after this is samarium cobalt. Okay, it's another material that uh, can, um, you can uh, uh, apply this material for high temperatures. And after this is ceramic and, and neodymium. They can op operate up below around 180 Celsius degrees approximately the maximum temperature that they can operate. After this, they start to have some problems for demagnetization, partial demagnetization. And in general, well, this is a characteristic of different materials in function of the uh, cost, magnetic field that they can produce, the operation, the temperature of the operation. And corrosion is another, uh, corrosion is another parameter, but uh, this parameter depends on the, or the uh, the methodology to try to to uh, to cover the magnets. We have different materials to cover the magnets. Right. Uh, for this reason, sometimes when you cover the magnets, sometimes you you believe that this material, for example, is neo. You say it's neo because the the surface of the material is very bright. Right. Sometimes sometimes it's not true. Ah. You say it can be <laughs> samarium or another material. It's difficult to, to see what is the material only for the physical uh, appearance. It's, 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 it's difficult to detect this. Well, the next is, this is for me, from my perspective, because I was working in the design of these devices and I was working in the magnetization process of the magnets. For me, it's another very, very interesting topic up in magnets. For me, it's very interesting. is the magnetization uh, uh, process of the magnets. In this table, I put uh, the different materials that we have now in the market, the, the, uh, these materials. Mm -hmm. And we have the, uh, what is the uh, flux density or what is the magnetic field that you need to apply to the materials to saturate them and magnetize them completely at the 100% of the saturation and magnetization. Mm -hmm. And you can see for anilco, it's, it's less of the one Tesla, it's less of one Tesla. For different grades of anilco, you need different levels of the magnetization, but this is less of the one Tesla. It's very easy to, ma to magnetize this material. It's easy. Another material after this is ceramic ferrite. You need between one and two Tesla. Well, uh, for ferrite, two Tesla is, uh, is a very big magnetic field. And after this, for low grade of the neodymium, you need between three and 3.5 Tesla. It's very, very high magnetic field. You need very, very high level of the energy. You need very high levels of the voltage and capacitance mm -hmm. to do this. And for neodymium, for high grade, you need between 3.5 and 4 Tesla. Some people go for 4.5 Tesla. In general, you can apply 4 Tesla and you saturate very, very well these materials. Okay. And the last point is samarium cobalt. For samarium cobalt, you need between five and six Tesla. It's huge, the, the magnetic field to produce this. And, it, and it is, the, is, the energy. is there a reference? It's like, do the, the machines get bigger that are required to do this? Or it's just pure energy? Like you could have the same machine that could magnetize all these different grades of, of material. Yeah, in general, we have uh, some commercial machines with different levels of the voltage and capacitance. And uh, when you decide the fixture, you need to choose what is the voltage and capacitance to do this. Uh, and after this, you need to decide the fixture, the coil, to magnetize the material. But uh, in, in function of the, how many poles you need to create in the material, 
what is the direction of the magnetization of the material, uh, what is the grade of the material in neodymium, ferrite, and other kind of things. You need to think about all these parameters to try to create this fixture. And the fixture needs to be capable to produce this magnetic field to saturate very well. Saturation means that you need to align all the domains in the material completely in the mm -hmm. direction of the magnetization, okay? To go for completely saturation or completely orientation of these domains. And after this, the material is, is stay in that point in completely magnetization. Okay. If you apply very low magnetic field compared with these values for these materials, you magnetize the material too. But the saturation and, and, and level of the magnetization is low. Then the material is producing very low magnetic field. Okay. It's another problem. You need to be careful with this process. Needs to be close to be perfect to try to get materials with very good uh, magnetization and they can produce the magnetic field that you are waiting or are expecting from them. <laughs> This might be down a rabbit hole, but would there be any reason that people would not put as much magnetization into certain materials rather than going all the way to the max? Is there applications for that kind of stuff or not really? It's not really, but in general, for example, when you design, for example, one low speaker, the low speaker, you say mm -hmm. this material in my uh, simulation, for example, is Neo uh, M42. Neo M42. Okay. You create, you put the BH curve of this material in the simulation, and this BH curve or the magnetization curve, BH curve is is confused. I prefer to use, to use the term the magnetization curve because the BH curve is in the first quadrant of the material. In the second quadrant is the demagnetization curve of the material, and in general, you put this BH curve in the simulation, you produce the magnetic field in the simulation, and well, you predict what is the design of the low speaker, okay? And this BH curve is a ideal curve, BH curve for the material. Mm -hmm. okay. It's in completely saturation. It, the material is not completely saturated and magnetized. When you put this material in the real speaker and you measure the field, in the, for example, in the gap in the region of the voice coil, mm -hmm. and the magnetic field is more lower compared with the field that you are expecting, Maybe one other of the problem is the magnetization of the magnets was incorrect or was not complete. Okay. Is it, and then, so then a question for quality control in, in the speaker build, is it pretty easy to be accurate at, at, from one to the next to make sure that they're all consistent in, in the magnetization? Yeah, after the magnetization process, you can see in this picture, in the yeah. next picture, in the, uh, the right, is a Helmut's coil. And Fox mirror, the people in the in the factories they have uh, they have automatized one process is automatized process. Um, well, they magnetize the for example the speakers. They mm -hmm. magnetize the speaker, and after this they move the coil to another Helmut's coil to try to measure the field from the magnet. If the field from the magnet is the level of the magnet, the the field that they measure with the Fox mirror is is very close to the ideal value that you are mm -hmm. waiting, mm -hmm. the, 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 the magnetization or, or the magnet or the, co or the uh, low speaker was good. Then okay. you can detect if the, if the magnetization process is wrong in some point of the production. Okay, okay yeah. cool. It's very, it's very interesting. It's you, you need to apply one pulse of the current in the process. It, the machine has capacitors, one bank of the capacitors. And they have uh, you connect this bank of the capacitors to the uh, to the fixture. Okay, the idea is to to share this this uh, bank of the capacitor with one level of the voltage, and after this with one you can see one switch. You can see the theory stores and other kind of the electronic devices like one switch. When you close the switch, you share all this energy in the coil, and it's one pulse of the current. We have this kind of the devices, for example, similar devices in the in Florida, mm -hmm. uh, in Tallahassee, Tallahassee, in the National uh, Magnetic Field Laboratory. They produce okay. these this big coils to produce mm -hmm. very 
very big magnetic fields around 40 Tesla to 100 Tesla for experimentation. And it's very similar, the technology is the same principle, it's the same thing. Only the thing here is magnetized magnets. Right. So, so for you, instead of going to Disney World, going to the lab in Tallahassee is more fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I was, I was there. I beside the laboratory. It's incredible. They have yeah. the coils there. But uh, for example, here I am using copper. We are mm -hmm. using copper in these coils, but they are using superconductor. Wow. Okay. To create this magnetic field. Yep. And well, some application for the permanent magnets. Well, for Anilco in, in general, uh, we are using for all this application Anilco, for example, mm -hmm. for guitar pickups, okay, for speakers, for hearing aids. Well, in general, we have many, many applications for Anilco, many, many applications because was of the first material that we, we, we were using in, right. uh, in, in the market for many applications like magnets. Uh, for ceramic ferrite, we are using this in loudspeakers, in DC motors, and permanent magnet motors. Uh, another technology, very inter interesting technology, is magnetic floors. It's another thing that I, I was working with so, uh, one company uh, here in USA and another company in uh, in UK. They produce uh, magnetic floors. It's no conventional tiles. Mm -hmm. It's like a you see the refrigerator magnet, refrigerator magnets, mm -hmm. flexible magnets. Well, they, they can produce tiles with this uh, layer of the uh, ceramic ferrite powder, strontium powder. They magnetize this, this layer and they put one up, uh, they prepare the soup floor with one paint with uh, iron particles. Okay, mm -hmm. they paint this, it's like paint. They they put this this thing in the in the soup floor and after this they put the the, the magnetic floors. Okay. What does the magnetic floor do? Yeah, exactly. Well, it's it's, it's to try to to replace the, the normal uh, tiles that we have in the houses, in offices, in hospitals. It's it's, it's a new technology. It's very easy to install. I see. Okay. You, yeah. Yeah, you don't have to glue the tiles down. They stick there, and then when they're damaged, you just pull it up and replace it. No, oh. it's no more this. It's no more this. No. And another, I was working in this uh, with them because some people has some issues about the pacemakers uh, because you need to put oh. this magne uh, uh, magnetic floor, floors in buildings, hospitals. And some people has some uh, pacemaker they need to be sure that the level of the, uh, the magnetic field in different heights is safe for mm. these people. It's very yeah. interesting. It's very interesting. And we continue using ceramic, uh, ceramic ferrite magnets in hand tools, lift tools to, 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 to lift a very high uh, or very big uh, uh, pieces of, of metal or steel. Mm -hmm. uh, we are using this material like uh, in magnetic separa separators to, to separate uh, uh, particles of the steel or iron mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. another products. And we are using in magnetic floors. Well, I, I repeat this. <laughs> and neodymium magnets, we are using neodymium magnets in low speaker and micro speakers in general. It's very big the market for neos in uh, speakers now. Microphones too. In permanent magnet motors, it's another big market. Uh, cell phones, you see your cell phone has magnets. Some companies for cell phone, they are using uh, magnets for some kind of the sensors that they have in the, in the, in the own cell mm. phone. Okay. Uh, we have in computers, we have magnets too. Uh, in levitation, uh, magnetic levitation system for trains, maglets. We are using magnets in linear motors, uh, in sensors, many sensors and sensing devices. We have neodymium magnets. We have uh, these magnets in magnetic actuators and in general in another consumer, consumer products. Uh, it's very interesting because the market now for Neo is very big. It's very, very big. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it went, uh, well, for Samarium Cobalt, Lost speakers the same for sputtering 
systems. It's another um, application to separate uh, uh, some, uh, we can say materials in the electronic process. Uh, we have magnetic actuators for this, uh, for, uh, uh, using uh, this kind of the magnet materials in permanent magnet motors in some, not in all the permanent magnet motors we are using these materials because it's not flexible sometimes uh, in lifting systems and mm. magnetic openings. It's another kind of the technology that in general, the application is, is, I am thinking we have more application for NEO compared with Samarium Cobalt for now. Okay. Well, this is a market for permanent magnets for now. In general, mm. it's a, uh, I, I obtained this from two papers. We don't have a lot of information about this now, but in general, this is a prediction uh, in billion of the dollars for the uh, market for magnets. Uh, and you can see here is uh, uh, for electronics, the automotive industry and the uh, generation of the energy, the, the application for these magnets is start to increase now. It's very big. The, the, the market for magnets is very, very big. And in China, the market in China is the same. They start to increase for different application. Aerospace uh, appears there, automotive, like now electronics in electronic appears the low speaker. Uh, medical application is another big application for permanent magnet. Well, in general, we can see that the, the application for magnets start to increase now or was mm -hmm. increasing in the last 10 years. It's very interesting. And we need to think more about the, uh, the source of these min minerals now, because it's important in the future, maybe for the next 10 years and maybe 10 and 20 years, the next 20 years is important. Uh, some people is, is, is thinking that maybe in the future, we will not have more material, magnet materials in the future. And some people start to think about to create this similar application, but with any magnets there. But it's difficult sometimes mm -hmm. because you need another kind of the source to create the magnetic field. Okay. Well, in, in the permanent magnets in low speaker is very interesting too. And in general, in low speaker, uh, we have the pole pieces. Okay, it's a, it's a normal structure of one low speaker. We have the pole pieces and we produce these pole pieces or the uh, low speaker manufacturer they are using, for example, low carbon steels uh, mm -hmm. for the pole pieces. Or sometimes now, some people start to use, uh, for example, Hyperco uh, 50 is another alloy. Uh, it's very special alloy. And this alloy uh, has very high uh, level of the saturation. It's a little better compared with low carbon steel. It's more expensive material, but you can produce a little more magnetic field in the circuit using this, this material. It's sometimes you need to produce a little more magnetic field and you cannot change this, the, the size of the magnet. You can use this kind of the materials in the pole pieces to increase a little more the field in the region of the gap or the air gap for the voice coil. Okay. It's another interesting thing. And um, I was, uh, uh, I am working with Mike uh, Casco and we are uh, trying to, to see what is the behavior of these materials in, uh, in pole pieces for low speaker in different designs. And well, we have different structures uh, for low speakers. You can see here different mm -hmm. structures. Uh, in general, we can produce a magnetic field in the axial direction or vertical direction, or we mm. can produce this field in the speaker in radial direction, okay? And sometimes, uh, for example, uh, the radial direction or the magnetization, for example, in, this, uh, in this another picture, in the, uh, for radial magnet, and we have the radial magnet, in this uh, structure, we can produce a little more field because the, magnetic, the, the magnet is completely in the air gap region is facing the air gap region and you lose uh, a little magnetic field in another region for the steel sometimes. Then mm -hmm. it's another option. We have different structure for the low speakers 
And we need to analyze very well all these structures with different materials to try to see what is the best benefit for the for the uh, those speaker manufacturer. It's many many parameters that you need to uh, to move at the same time to try to get the correct uh, or the perfect uh, design for the low speaker. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, I, we have one comparison here between two uh, uh, low speaker. The, we have the ferrite, we, we have one ferrite woofer and one uh, neo woofer. And you can see the, the ferrite woofer is more bigger, okay, in volume the magnet, the ferrite magnet has more bigger volume compared with the neo magnet. We have less, uh, in, in neo we have very small amount of the magnetic material in, in, in using neo, mm -hmm. but the structure of the steel needs to be very high. We need to put more steel. Okay. okay. In ferrite, we need more material for the magnet and less material for the steel. Okay. But in general, you need to you need to play with the cost of these materials in general and with the size of the, the speaker in the design process. Right. Yep. So is there any other advantage to having uh, a high uh, BH neodymium versus the lower ceramic? Yeah. It, the problem is that another thing is in low speaker, another parameter that we need to think, uh, we need to... Um, consider is the uh, size of the gap. The size of the gap is very important. If the size of the gap or air gap is very, very small, uh, the volume of the, of, the, of the magnet material and the steel is reduced. But the, if the, if the, for example, the gap is one millimeter, uh, this affects the production of the field in the air gap and you need to increase or the, or the magnet material or the steel material in the low speaker. It's different parameter. You need to play with all the parameters at the same time to try to see what is the best design for this. But in general, this is a two perspective for ferrite and neo uh, and neo magnets in low speaker. It's the general perspective, and it's very interesting because you can see you uh, you are waiting maybe to use neo very small amount of the neo sometimes and very small amount of the steel. Okay, but this depends on the speaker. This is for woofer, but for micro speakers, it's different. It's different. You need in micro speaker the, the gap is super small. Then the amount of the ma magnet material is very small, and the amount of the steel is very small too. Yep. So uh, in a lot of applications, say a large woofer, there's no reason to change to neodymium because you already generate within the space you have available. You can already get uh, the maximum field strength that the steel can tolerate. And yes. so that's it. Basically, you could change to neodymium, but you're just uh, swapping uh, magnet space for steel. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's correct. Okay. It's correct. It's, it's for the reason that it's, it's very interesting the analysis of a low speaker, the electromagnetic analysis. You need to play with different parameters to try to get the best uh, design for, for the speaker. It's very interesting. With, yes. with the size of the magnet and then trying to design it for the way the field is flowing, uh, if you use yes. a larger chunk of ferrite, is it more complicated to be precise in the field, that how, how the magnet will ultimately move in production? Uh, I am thinking is from, you can see, I don't know, but you can see the... Uh, I don't know, but for example, for ferrite ma uh, magnet, mm -hmm. I, I don't know in production, you know, maybe it's, it's, it's another thing that we need to think about this because in, no, I don't know. I don't know this right. part. Okay. No. no, no worries. Just a thought. Yeah. Uh, in general, well, this is a, a small presentation for magnet. But in general, for example, now in the future, uh, we have this nitride uh, iron mat material. It's very interesting material too. And this material can be, can, we can apply this material for different applications. I hope in the next 10 years, we can get this material ready in the market. And, 
and see what is the behavior compared with Neo and Ferrari, maybe in the speakers or Moros and see what is the behavior. It's, it's very interesting material. But okay. in general, the, the magnetic, uh, all the uh, permanent magnet technology is very interesting. Um, but we need to think more about the extraction of these minerals because it's important. Okay. It's important. All right, yeah. let's uh, stop the sharing here. We'll go back to this. Um, okay. So yeah, that's uh, it's it's look quite a bit of information. A lot of good uh, kind of foundations for people to understand what the materials are and how they interact, and that kind of magic balance between environmental issues and cost and 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 magnetic performance. Um, some stuff that probably a lot of people heard about but didn't quite know all the details. So that's really good to take a dive on that. Um, yeah. Anything else you'd like to ask, Simon? Uh, nothing more from me. Okay. <laughs> so, 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 Sally, uh, your your consultancy. We can put the contact information in the in the details below. And uh, I guess, uh, what kind of what kind of business are you looking for? You're looking to be consultant for people's magnet design on their speakers, obviously, in the audio world. Um, no, it's, well, my my idea is very interesting. Okay. Uh, let me to explain you what is the idea because uh, uh, some people ask me the same question when they send me messages. But uh, here in USA, uh, we have a we have a lot, for example, inventors here in USA. Many mm -hmm. people has uh, very interesting magnetic projects or electromagnetic projects, but the problem all the time is the money. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they are looking for help to try to finish some kind of the technology. They have the patent or they have the patent and the prototype or only they have the idea, no patent. They, they have different things. And my idea now is to try to work with them together to try to finish the technologies, different technologies. I, I want to help them to try to finish the technology. Okay. Try to get the patents, try to get the prototypes. And after this, help them to try to create companies, magnetic companies here in the US. Okay. It's the idea I have now, but in general now, I am working with uh, people or companies that they have projects and they need to take decision. And especially, uh, I am using simulation, computer uh, simulation, electromagnetic simulation using the finite element method to try to predict different uh, design of these devices. And okay. I am helping to try to solve problems, to try to develop technology and different kind of things. But in general, uh, the idea in, uh, maybe for the next couple of the years is to try to help all these people to put all this technology in the market. Okay, very cool. So yeah, we'll put the contact inf information below for you and your company. And I guess thanks everybody for watching today. Please like, subscribe and share to anybody who's would be you think would be interested in this kind of technology so yeah thanks for watching bye bye everybody thanks salvador thank you, thank you very much thank you